So often when we hear the debate between homeschooling or public or private schooling, we hear about the topic of socialization. I'm sure we all know one of those homeschoolers who they really have been like just at home with just their own family kind of their whole lives. And so they're a bit um, pushed off from the rest of society. And so when they come to interact with people who aren't in their normal sphere of influence, there can be some sort of awkwardness. We always know of the awkward homeschooler. They are out there. And so because of that, there's a stipulation that public school is the way to go and if you want socialization properly for your children. Now, today I want to challenge the narrative, but with that being said, I will enter with the um, assumption that no matter what educational system that you choose to use for your children, there is going to be some level of parental authority in getting opportunities for your children to socialize with people who are different than them or people who are different ages than them or people of a um, different socioeconomic background. Like there is an element where whether you're public schooled, homeschooled, private schooled, the parents do have to kind of put you in a situation where you are going to grow in that area socially. With that being said, I went to private school until I was in fourth grade. So I do not know the public school experience after that I was homeschooled. Um, however, I will just, from a school system type of setting, I went to school, you were there for your classes, you maybe got some time to talk during recess or lunchtime, and then you had school and that was your day. And so for me, I actually didn't get to talk. I had friends and my, all the people in the class were like my classmates and then I had my best friend and then I had my group of friends or whatever within my class. But the time that we were actually spent interacting and socializing with one another was definitely a lot less than our entire school day. Um, maybe an hour at most per day. And that was five days a week. So maybe like five hours a week of actually socializing with other people. Now that was only in elementary school and perhaps in high school it's a bit different. I've heard people talk about clubs and sports that they get to interact with, which is outside of school, which means they're going to school for that six or seven hours and then doing sports on top of that or some sort of club on top of school. Um, however, I would say as a general rule, sitting next to your fellow classmates for six hours of the day is probably not the most effective form of communication and of socialization that you'll have to deal with in the real world. Now granted, in the real world, a lot of people do have jobs um, where they do kind of sit alongside other people and you do your own work and you just kind of interact as, as you can. But usually outside of that, a lot of people have friend groups and they have interactions with other people who are different ages than them and different types than them. They have neighbors. They have, you know, obviously the coworkers. They have families. And so the socialization settings in the real world are a little bit more diverse than just sitting, doing your own thing in the classroom, listening to a teacher talk. With that being said, I understand there are people who they have gotten in these groups and in these clubs and that's where they get to have extra socialization on top of that um, with other people and getting to learn important aspects such as like teamwork and responsibility. I do think as someone who is homeschooled, because we weren't spending six hours a day in a classroom setting, trying to just focus in on, on learning something that, in my mind, when I was in school, could be learned in less time. Um, because of that, there was more time available for us to be able to go out into the community and join clubs in the community or to 
help out with um, service activities in the community, whether that's like through soup kitchens or just in the regular community, like painting people's houses or whether that was with um, a quilting club or whatever the case might be, you did have actually more time to be able to go out in the community and be having those social interactions with people who are vastly different ages than you. I think in the concept in the world that we live in, we've created socialization to mean talking with people who are of a similar age as you and just communicating with that group of people for children. And then once you get to be an adult, all of a sudden you're talking to people who are 80 at your workplace. You're talking to people who are 50. You're talking to people who are 20. You're talking to people who are 15. And it's a much wider variety of age than when you're a child and you're with your fellow third graders or maybe once in a while talking with a fifth grader or talking with someone who's a little bit out of your age range. I think for most people, yes, there are teachers in public schools that they still get to have conversations with, um, but I think as far as socialization goes and a broad spectrum of socialization, homeschooling does offer that time incentive where you do have more time to be able to go out into your community and have a lot of those interactions with people who are different than you and people who are of different ages and stages of life than you to be able to learn from them and um, learn whether that's skills or just learn from their experiences in life um, rather than creating this almost bubble of peers influencing other peers um, of all the same age group. If you enjoyed this conversation, go ahead and subscribe. I talk about a lot of different subjects, but a lot of them is just challenging the status quo and the social narrative of today and thinking about things or trying to think of things in a different way that might be typical. Thank you so much.